In the age of austerity, today on the show, folks, this. This is a very important step. Uh, it is something that he supports. Uh, you have been quoted coming out of your caucus as calling this agreement a sugar-coated Satan sandwich. Uh, was that indeed your quote? Is that how you feel about this deal? It's a very accurate quote. Uh, what I'm saying is that if you lift the bomb, uh, what you see is antithetical to everything the great religions of the world teach, which is take care of the poor, take care of the aged. And when you look at the phone calls I've gotten, they're 71, 7 to 1 in favor of a balanced uh, deal and also uh, preserving Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Uh, and I, uh, I'm concerned about this because we don't know the details. And, and until we see the details, uh, we're going to be extremely non-committed. But on the surface, it looks like a Satan sandwich. Yes, we know the details now, folks. And it is indeed a Satan sandwich. And not Satan sandwich for you uh, people who enjoy that um, vegetarian delight. A Satan sandwich. Today on the program, I bite into it. I take a huge bite, and I try and uh, keep my gag reflex from spewing it all over my computer, in which case we may have some uh, broadcast problems. We're already having a problem with our uh, Sammy cam uh, because I puked on the Satan sandwich. Uh, in fact, uh, in just a minute or two, I will be talking to Ezra Klein of the Washington Post on this Satan sandwich. But let's start. I want to just start with this one piece so we can set the table here in the New York Times. So we will be able to discuss the implications of this deal in the proper context. New York Times reports last week brought the disconcerting news that the economy grew no faster than, no faster than the population during the first six months of the year, in part because of spending cuts by state and local governments. Now the federal government is cutting too. Unemployment will be higher than it would have been otherwise, said dirty fucking hippie. No, wait, I'm sorry. That wasn't a dirty hippie. That was Mohammed El Arian, the chief executive of PIMCO. Not a uh, classic hippie. He said this uh, Sunday on ABC. Growth will be lower than it would be otherwise. And inequality would be worse than it would be otherwise. We have a very weak economy, so withdrawing more spending at this stage will make it even weaker. This is not going to help the economy. This is going to hurt the economy. Put aside every other implication of what it means politically, what it means rhetorically, uh, everything that has gone on here, we've capitulated to hostage, to hostage takers. Put all that aside. This deal is going to hurt the economy and probably even increase the deficit long term. We will get to that. There's broad agreement the United States needs to, needs to pay down its debts, but most economists say the government would have waited a year or more for the economy to strengthen. It may take a little bit more. Uh, the Republican authors of the debt ceiling say that cutting the size of government will increase economic growth down the road because federal borrowing soaks up money otherwise available to private businesses. Yet we are at the lowest interest rates possible that we could probably ever possibly see. So the idea that the federal government is soaking up all this money is ludicrous. Profits are at an all-time high, corporate profits. Stock market is up. From an accounting point of view, it seems obvious you would reduce GDP if you cut government spending, said Randall Krosner, economics professor at the University of Chicago and a former Fed governor appointed by Bush. But the key is really the impact on consumption and investment. If you reduce government spending, and if people think that reduces uncertainty about the tax burden down the line, they may be more comfortable with spending. Yes, that's why 50% uh, of the country is not spending any money. Because they're focused on potential uh, taxation in the future. What? It may be because they don't have any cash. Or because they don't have a job. No, in fact, it's the idea that someday in the future we may get taxed more, so I'm not going to spend now. Come with me and you'll be That is in a world of pure ridiculous. Imagination. 